sing the Gloria Patri as a response to them. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God.
Son of God went through suffering, and whenever we suffer too, we know that God has compassion for us. So let's pause for a moment and say a prayer for anyone we know who is sick or suffering or in trouble. Who, who do we know among us that needs our prayer today? Eleanor? For Mama. And let's pray for all of those who are missing um, family members who have gone and passed on. The Todd Jordan family. The Todd Jordan family. Judy. For Judy Hutchinson. Gary Holland. Did you say Gary Holland? That's right, yes. Jerry Godsey. Jerry Godsey. The El Corey family. The El Corey family. Harold and Love. Harold and Love. Dot Owenby. Dot Owenby. Teresa Bryant. Thanks. 
surprisingly deep. And sometimes <coughs> we think that they're healed. Years gone, they're healed, and all of a sudden they open up again, raw and fresh. For better or worse, our words are powerful. <coughs> We're like our creator in that way. We are, after all, made in God's image. And God's words are powerful. When God created heaven and earth, the whole universe, God did it not with hammer and nails, but with words. God said, let there be light. And there was light. Because God's words are powerful. And today, we remember <laughs> when somehow, Mysteriously, that word became flesh, became a human being. That's the way John describes the birth of Christ. Now, Matthew and Luke, they tell the Christmas story that we know best, the one that, as a said, we can recite by heart. Matthew and Luke tell us about mangers and shepherds, about wise men and scared parents, all the familiar things, but not John. John doesn't start the story of Christ in first century Palestine. John starts the story of Christ before time was even recorded at all. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. And then, one day, at a specific moment in time, the word became flesh. So what words did the word use when the word became flesh? When a tiny baby grew in body and soul and learned to shape words with his lips and breathe words with his lungs, what words did that word speak? A lot of them. Too many for today. But there's some in particular that I've been thinking about for the last two days. They happen in John chapter 8. And it comes about when some scribes and some Pharisees, they see an opportunity to corner Jesus, to back him into a lose-lose situation. They come across this woman who has been caught in the act of adultery. And if you think about it, that's really awkward. So they collect her and drop her at the feet of Jesus and say, Well, Jesus, what should we do? The law says we should stone her. And they're right. They're not making that up. In Leviticus and in Deuteronomy, there are laws that say a woman caught in that situation should be stoned to death. So Jesus kneels down and starts to write some words in the sand. And I imagine the scribes and the Pharisees circled around Jesus like vultures hovering. And they're tossing their stones up and down. And they're ready because they know they've got them now. They know that if Jesus says to let her go, well, then he's turned his back on the law. But if Jesus says to stone her, he's turned his back on that woman. They toss their stones and they lick their lips in anticipation. But the word stands up and says, all right. But the one among you who's without sin, you throw the first stone. And one by one, they drop their stones and they walk away. When the word became flesh, that's how the word used his words. Not for sticks and stones to hurt others, but to speak like band-aids and neosporin, to offer healing for people with his words. That's what the word has done for us. And on this Christmas day, may you feel the healing power of that word. All the way down to the deepest wounds of your soul, the ones that were inflicted so long ago, it doesn't even make sense that they're still there. May the word
word come into those places and offer you healing. Overpower those wounds with love. And then once you feel that healing, may you be transformed. <clears throat> may it change the way you use your God-given ability to speak words. Every day, this day even, you will say thousands of them. And because of the presence of the word in your life, may your words never be used for harm and always for healing. Because that's what it was like when the Word became flesh. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Amen.